All right, hello everyone. Um, today we'd like to go over some tips on caping out your deer. Um, last night I was able to uh, get this guy out in the swamp about two miles back and Jeff Ginky was nice enough to come over. Um, he's a Hunting Beast member and caped this thing out for me. Um, he's just going to go over some nice tips and tricks on how to do this and some good do's and don'ts. So with that, we're going to get working on it. All right, Mario, congrats on the kill. First thing that we want to do is just talk about leaving enough hide. A lot of guys, what they do is they come way down on the shoulder, they'll end up cutting here. Even though a traditional shoulder mount is usually just ahead of the front leg, a lot of the poses today are including a lot of this extra back. So what we want to do is start, you know, generally right about where the end of the lungs are, halfway through. Always give your taxidermist extra hide. They can always cut it, they can never put it back. So another mistake a lot of guys do is they'll end up cutting right here and not giving any foreleg here, which then the problem is when you go to mount it, you have no armpit to tuck into your mannequin. So what I generally like to do is start halfway down the front leg and cut it and go up and around and then we'll come across and what we'll do is we'll show you, we'll get some nice close-up shots of where to cut to make sure you have plenty of skin. Okay. Alright, first thing what I generally do is start right about here. All you really need is a sharp knife. What I prefer to do is use my scalpel. You can't beat that, it's going to be super sharp. Usually it goes a lot quicker this way. So you're just going to do both four legs this way. Right here you'll notice a hair pattern. You have this inside hair pattern going this way, this way out here. That's kind of the line to ride up. A lot of these new mannequins, you see a lot more of this shank of the leg. I generally take my knife, get started just underneath that, kind of follow it up. With this longer hair, it's easier to hide sewing and then all you're doing is basically holding the skin and letting the weight of the animal take this off now you can see where Mario finished field dressing his deer was about here generally if you want the end of the brisket is right here. That's where I generally would stop. He gave us plenty of hide. But that's generally a good reference to just stop right there. So what we're going to do is make the next cut, and that's going to be going around the deer. Now Mario doesn't really know what pose he wants to do yet, so what we're going to do is give him more than enough hide. We're going to go right about here. So there's going to be an incision all the way around the deer this way. This cut, we're just going to continue that up to it. So we went up the foreleg here, we're just going to cut straight up to here. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Now since he has this cut here, all I'm going to do is go straight across and connect those. And it kind of just will fold this flap down. Now you'll notice there's a lot of fat right here. Best thing to do is kind of just pull it away gently. Let the weight of the animal help you. Don't fight it. Don't pull. Don't be in a rush. Don't leave gobs of meat on this. I get a lot of guys, they'll leave, I swear, like 20 pounds of meat and fat on a hide, and it's just, it gets to us, and it's just a pain. Anything, those kind of things, it just speeds it up. So you're going to end up salting this, and you want to give enough um, hide and everything. But now, as you see here, we're going to go right back around here. 
Here's where we ended. So do you have to scrape all that fat and meat off? Yeah, and then... salt. What we use is non-iodized salt. I usually get it from uh, like feed milk because you can buy it in like 50 pound bags. Okay. Uh, salt will penetrate little bits of meat. Salt will not penetrate fat. So before it goes to the tannery, we try to get all of that off the hide before we salt it. So this was great that Mario gave me a call and I was able to get over here right away. Faster you can get your deer hide off, preserved, the better the quality is going to be. Like Mario did with his video slide, all starts kind of with the prep right there. Don't drag it through, don't drag it over concrete, blacktop, anything that's going to remove hair. Don't worry about this gear that's falling off. This is nothing. Because you just said not to remove hair. No. Right. <laughs> this is only Mario's deer, so nobody cares. <laughs> so I'm going to go back on this side here. So what we've done is we've gone around the whole thing, basically. We have a flap here, which is the brisket. Yep. That's going to be enough. The legs are split right here. This is where a lot of guys make the mistake as they think, okay, well, uh, I'm just going to cut right here. That doesn't give you anything. It cuts your armpit off. It might work. If you end up doing that, not the end of the world. We can cut the backboard off the mount, make it work. There's little tricks that you can do it. So if by chance someone does that to you, don't worry. It's not the end of the world. We can usually make just about anything work. So now you're just working, keep working your way around the yeah. entire... We're just going to work our way down around these shoulders. Usually like here how I said not to get a lot of meat. That's not a lot of meat, but until you start getting it going, you can almost then start pulling and it'll come off. But you're just starting to get going. And then once it gets going down, the weight of it generally helps. Or if your camera guy has a knife and he can use the tripod, then that always speeds it up too. <laughs> I seem to have lo I lost my knife, I think, in the Did swamp you? last night. Left it out there. See, you're just working it down. A lot of guys, they'll also, right here on the back, They'll just start with a incision all the way down. You can do that as well and then kind of pull it this way. If you weren't able to hang it up, that's an easier way to probably start to get the height off of it. But we're lucky here we have a lift. But what we're going to do on this one is we're going to give Mario a short incision. That'll be less sewing on my end. And I'll show you how to do that once we get up a little closer to the neck. Sort of the big thing with this is just to take your time. Yes. Use the weight of the hide and the animal as you're pulling down on it. Yep. So what if someone is cutting along and they accidentally slit a hole in the cape at any point? Not the end of the world. If you do that, just make sure you get somewhere around that and not make the hole any bigger. bigger. Kind of minimize how long it is. But no, everything can be... Someone and put it back together. 
the cleaner you, it comes off, you know, the nicer your mount's gonna look. Usually around these front legs, you just kind of got to manipulate it. Like here's a case where a lot of guys right here would poke a hole. You'd be in a rush because this is draping down. Right. They'd come through here quick. You'd end up cutting holes in it. And this is, you know, part of your brisket and your your leg. You don't want to cut yourself short or accidentally do that. So just take your time. Let the skin kind of tell you what it wants to do. Right. If you're fighting it, you kind of know, like, something's not going right. Also, make sure your knife is sharp. If your knife gets dull, you'll start cutting a lot more holes. Like, I can tell right now that this scalpel blade is starting to get a little dull. Generally, a hide also comes off a lot nicer when they're fresh. Also a lot of guys if they shoot one late in the year and it's super cold outside and they let it freeze, that's when you really got to be careful skinning them because that skin doesn't like to release from the muscle and if it's frozen you can get to a spot where you can cut holes super easy. The skin gets pretty brittle. But yeah, it's just, it's so attached, it doesn't want to release, and then when you are doing knife work around it, it's, it's really easy not to know where you are. But this one is coming up really nice. Usually the farther you go down now, you're going to work half to kind of do this knife work, where you're just working it back and forth almost, because you, what you're doing is you're compressing all of this skin down on the head so it's not using gravity as much. Right. Because what we want to do is pull this down. Right. Until we can get to like here. Or if you just want to hold this horns. Uh, hold it up. Yeah, I can get one side at a time. Now obviously if you had them a little higher up in the air that would make this a little bit easier. We ran out of garage height so this is what we're having to do to do it. But again just take your time and cut around the base of his neck. Keep pulling the hide down and working it around. I mean, there's some guys that would right here would just stop and go cut it off with the sawzall and take it to the taxidermist. We're almost there, so we're going to do it the right way. Show you guys how it's supposed to be done. Here's another question I had. So let's say you do get blood on the cape and the, and the part that's going to be displayed, or you have you know, some muck that got on there, some parts. What do you guys do to to restore the cape in those cases? They're pretty, it's just dirty. <clears throat> you wouldn't believe it, what you can get away with this. They get, we send them off to a tannery, a professional tanner that tans it, they wash it, goes in salt water baths. It's unbelievable what they do to it. So the first thing that happens is, is when we salt it, that sets the hair. That yeah. keeps the hair from falling out. After that, they wash it so many times it comes out really, really clean. clean. So, you know, obviously if you get a ton of blood on it or something, just wipe it off of the rags so you're not making a mess at home or in your vehicle. Right. Things like that. So really the key part is, is just not dragging it through thicket and brush that's going to pull hair out and really rough up and damage the yeah, hair. Yeah, the best thing to do is, you know, watch that video of how you guys got Dan's buck out. Using yep. your cart, using your sled, and not just dragging it and losing hair. Making scuff marks on it. Right. Well, that's what we had to do with this one, too, is we got it on the sled through the portion in the swamp and slid it through. Then once we got to dry land, we could get it up on the cart.
So what we're doing is we're just taking this hide all the way down to kind of where the white throat patch under their chin meet. Alright. So as you can see right here, you can see my fingers poking through the hide, kind of. We're right to about where the back of the ear is. That's about as far as you're going to get here. Like Mario said, if we could get the thing higher in the ear, this portion from here to here would have went a lot faster. This is what we got to deal with. This is how we do it. So next what we're going to do is we're just going to start to cut through the, the flesh here. Then what we'll do is just take a sawzall and pop it right through. So once again, I'm right about close to that atlas joint. Okay. kind of easier if you have one guy hold the head and if you are up higher you can kind of see where the um, spine is and if you do it right you can pop this thing off without even having to use a saw As you see right there, we're going to get it off without having to use a saw. That's that ATS joint. Mm -hmm. Sort of the skull attaches to it. That's how you remove it. So we're going to take this home, sell it on eBay. <laughs> we'll put it in the forums. Any hunting beast would like to make a purchase or a bid. On a nice 10 pointer? On a nice 10 pointer out of the marsh. Give me a call. And Mario will go home and cry then. <laughs> it's kind no, of interesting. He's got a dark black front on him. Yeah, very pretty deer. He's got some nice character points down here. Very symmetrical tent. Make for a great trophy. So now, once you get it to this form and a guy's got to transport it, like what? How do you, how do, you do that? What we're going to do is take the horns off from Mario, so that'll be the next thing we show. But once you get it this far, you could take this, put it in your freezer, okay. freeze it, then you can take it to your taxidermist. Um, they'll thaw it out and finish up the rest of it. That's basically how to keep it out, how to get it to them. We can go through and show how to pop the horns out too if people want other information, but this is generally, you know, where it ends. What Mario's gonna do here now is put a great big black trash bag over this so he can keep it sanitary and take it over to his meat processor. Yep. But if you guys have any questions, go on the forum. Look me up, Jeff G, Mario, Dan. They can help us out connecting people, information, things like that. I also do work for Trudell Outdoor Adventures, Taxidermy. Look us up on the Facebook, web, uh, get a hold of us and we'll work something out for you. Yeah, they do a really nice job. Um, Jeff did my buck last year, the eight pointer that I shot. And uh, so I'm happy that he's going to be working on this one too. So he did a really good job. So. We always like returning customers. That means we did something, right? Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, good luck, everybody. Well, good. Well, thanks, Jeff, for uh, taking us through that. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, come to the forum and post your questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you.